Moldavia, Romanian, Moldova, pronounced Moldova, listen or Terra Moldove in Romanian Latin alphabet, Terra Moldove in Old Romanian Cyrillic alphabet is a historical region and former principality in Central and Eastern Europe, corresponding to the territory between the Eastern Carpathians and the Dniester River. An initially independent and later autonomous state, it existed from the 14th century to 1859, when it united with Wallachia Terra Romaneasca as the basis of the modern Romanian state. At various times, Moldavia included the regions of Bessarabia with the Budjak, all of Bukovina and Herza. The region of Pokudia was also part of it for a period of time. The western half of Moldavia is now part of Romania, the eastern side belongs to the Republic of Moldova, and the northern and southeastern parts are territories of Ukraine. <laughs> Name and etymology The original and short-lived reference to the region was Bogdania, after Bogdan I, the founding figure of the Principality. The names Moldavia and Moldova are derived from the name of the Moldova River, however, the etymology is not known and there are several variants. A legend mentioned in Descriptio Moldavi by Dmitri Kantomir links it to an aurochs hunting trip of the Marimers Voivod Drajos and the latter's chase of a star-marked bull. Drajos was accompanied by his female hound called Molda. When they reached the shores of an unfamiliar river, Molda caught up with the animal and was killed by it. The dog's name would have been given to the river and extended to the country. The Old German Mold, meaning, open pit mine. The Gothic Muda, Gothic, runic, meaning, dust, dirt, cognate with the English Mold, referring to the river. A Slavic etymology Ova is a quite common Slavic suffix, marking the end of one Slavic genitive form, denoting ownership, chiefly of feminine nouns i.e., that of Molda. A landowner named Alexa Moldauvik is mentioned in a 1334 document as a local boyar in service to Yuri II of Halic. This attests to the use of the name before the foundation of the Moldavian state and could be the source for the region's name. In several early references, Moldavia is rendered under the composite form Moldo Wallachia in the same way Wallachia may appear as Hungro Wallachia. Ottoman Turkish references to Moldavia included Bogdan Iflak meaning Bogdan's Wallachia and Bogdan and occasionally Kara Bogdan Black Bogdania see also names in other languages The name of the region in other languages include French Moldavi German Moldau Hungarian Moldva Russian Moldavia Moldavia Turkish Bogdan Prensliji Greek Topic History Topic Prehistory and Antiquity Topic Early Middle Ages The inhabitants of Moldova were Christians. Archaeological works revealed the remains of a Christian necropolis at Mahalasini, Botosani County, from the 5th century. The place of worship, and the tombs had Christian characteristics. The place of worship had a rectangular form with sides of 8 and 7 meters. Similar necropolises and places of worship were found at Nicolina, in Iasith Bolahovini, a Vlach population, is mentioned by the Hypatian Chronicle in the 13th century. The chronicle shows that this land is bordered on the principalities of Halic, Volhynia and Kiev. Archaeological research also identified the location of 13th-century fortified settlements in this region. Alexandru V. Boulder identified Voskodavi, Voskodav T, Voloskov T, Volkov T, Volosivcha and their other towns and villages between the middle course of the rivers Nistru, Dniester and Nipru, Dnieper. 
The Bolahovini disappeared from Chronicles after their defeat in 1257 by Daniel of Galicia's troops. In the early 13th century, the Brodniks, a possible Slavic Vlach vassal state of Halic, were present, alongside the Vlachs, in much of the region's territory. Towards 1216, the Brodniks are mentioned as in service of Suzdal. On the border between Halic and the Brodniks, in the 11th century, a Viking by the name of Rodfos was killed in the area by Vlachs who supposedly betrayed him. In 1164, the future Byzantine emperor Andronikos I Komnenos, was taken prisoner by Vlach shepherds around the same region. <laughs> High Middle Ages Friar William of Rubric, who visited the court of the Great Khan in the 1250s, listed the Black or Vlachs, among the peoples who paid tribute to the Mongols, but the Vlachs' territory is uncertain. Rubric described Blakia as Asan's territory, south of the Lower Danube, showing that he identified it with the northern regions of the Second Bulgarian Empire. Later in the 14th century, King Charles I of Hungary attempted to expand his realm and the influence of the Catholic Church eastwards after the fall of Cuman rule, and ordered a campaign under the command of Finta de Mend 1324. In 1342 and 1345, the Hungarians were victorious in a battle against Tatar Mongols. The conflict was resolved by the death of Jani Beg, in 1357. The Polish chronicler Jan de Lugos mentioned Moldavians under the name Wallachians as having joined a military expedition in 1342, under King Władysław I, against the Margraviate of Brandenburg. In 1353, Drajos, mentioned as a Vlach Nyas in Marimers, was sent by Louis I to establish a line of defense against the Golden Horde forces of Mongols on the Siret River. This expedition resulted in a polity vassal to Hungary, centered around Baya Targal Moldove or Moldvabanya. Bogdan of Cahaya, another Vlach voivode from Marimers who had fallen out with the Hungarian king, crossed the Carpathians in 1359, took control of Moldavia, and succeeded in removing Moldavia from Hungarian control. His realm extended north to the Cheremish River, while the southern part of Moldavia was still occupied by the Tatar Mongols. After first residing in Baia, Bogdan moved Moldavia's seat to Siret. It was to remain there until Petru Muzat moved it to Suksiva. It was finally moved to Iasi under Alexandru Lepusnianu, in 1565. The area around Suksiva, roughly correspondent to future Bukovina, would later constitute one of the two administrative divisions of the new realm, under the name Terra de Sus, the Upper Land, whereas the rest, on both sides of the Prut River, formed Terra de Yosh, the Lower Land. Disfavored by the brief union of Angevin Poland and Hungary the latter was still the country's overlord, Bogdan's successor Latku accepted conversion to Roman Catholicism around 1370, but his gesture was to remain without consequences. Despite remaining officially Eastern Orthodox and culturally connected with the Byzantine Empire after 1382, princes of the House of Bogdan Muzat entered a conflict with the Constantinople Patriarchy over control of appointments to the newly founded Moldavian Metropolitan seat. Patriarch Antony IV even cast an anathema over Moldavia after Roman I expelled his appointee back to Byzantium. The crisis was finally settled in favor of the Moldavian princes under Alexander I. Nevertheless, religious policy remained complex, while conversions to faiths other than Orthodox were discouraged and forbidden for princes. Moldavia included sizable Roman Catholic communities, Germans and Magyars, as well as non Chalcedonic Armenians. After 1460, the country welcomed Hussite refugees, founders of Chubertu and, probably, Husi. The Principality of Moldavia covered the entire geographic region of Moldavia. In various periods, various other territories were politically connected with the Moldavian Principality. 
This is the case of the province of Pocodia, the fiefdoms of Cetadia de Balta and Siseu both in Transylvania or, at a later date, the territories between the Dniester and the Bug rivers. Petru I profited from the end of the Hungarian-Polish Union and moved the country closer to the Jagiellon realm, becoming a vassal of Władysław II on September 26, 1387. This gesture was to have unexpected consequences. Petru supplied the Polish ruler with funds needed in the war against the Teutonic Knights, and was granted control over Pokudia until the debt was to be repaid. As this is not recorded to have been carried out, the region became disputed by the two states, until it was lost by Moldavia in the Battle of Oberton. 1531. Prince Petru also expanded his rule southwards to the Danube Delta. His brother Roman I conquered the Hungarian-ruled Cetadia Alba in 1392, giving Moldavia an outlet to the Black Sea, before being toppled from the throne for supporting Fyodor Koryadovich in his conflict with Vytautas the Great of Lithuania. Under Stephen I, growing Polish influence was challenged by Sigismund of Hungary, whose expedition was defeated at Gindoani in 1385. However, Stephen disappeared in mysterious circumstances. Although Alexander I was brought to the throne in 1400 by the Hungarians with assistance from Mercia I of Wallachia, he shifted his allegiances towards Poland notably engaging Moldavian forces on the Polish side in the Battle of Grunwald and the Siege of Marienburg, and placed his own choice of rulers in Wallachia. His reign was one of the most successful in Moldavia's history, but also saw the very first confrontation with the Ottoman Turks at Cetadia Alba in 1420, and later even a conflict with the Poles. A deep crisis was to follow Alexandru's long reign, with his successors battling each other in a succession of wars that divided the country until the murder of Bogdan II and the ascension of Peter III Aaron in 1451. Nevertheless, Moldavia was subject to further Hungarian interventions after that moment, as Matthias Corvinus deposed Aaron and backed Alexandral to the throne in Suceava. Petru Aaron's rule also signified the beginning of Moldavia's Ottoman Empire allegiance, as the ruler agreed to pay tribute to Sultan Mehmed II. Topic: <laughs> Late Middle Ages. Under Stephen the Great, who took the throne and subsequently came to an agreement with Casimirs IV of Poland in 1457, the state reached its most glorious period. Stephen blocked Hungarian interventions in the Battle of Béa, invaded Wallachia in 1471, and dealt with Ottoman reprisals in a major victory the 1475 Battle of Vaslui. After feeling threatened by Polish ambitions, he also attacked Galicia and resisted Polish reprisals in the Battle of the Kosmin Forest 1497. However, he had to surrender Chilia Kilia, and Cetadia Alba Bilhorod Dnistrovsky, the two main fortresses in the Budjak, to the Ottomans in 1484, and in 1498 he had to accept Ottoman suzerainty, when he was forced to agree to continue paying tribute to Sultan Bayezid II. Following the taking of Houghton Coten, and Pokudia, Stephen's rule also brought a brief extension of Moldavian rule into Transylvania. Cetadia de Balta and Siseu became his fiefs in 1489. <laughs> Early modern era and Renaissance Under Bogdan III the one-eyed, Ottoman overlordship was confirmed in the shape that would rapidly evolve into control over Moldavia's affairs. Peter IV Rares, who reigned in the 1530s and 1540s, clashed with the Habsburg monarchy over his ambitions in Transylvania losing possessions in the region to George Martinuzzi, was defeated in Pokudia by Poland, and failed in his attempt to extricate Moldavia from Ottoman rule. The country lost Bender to the Ottomans, who included it in their Silistra Islet. A period of profound crisis followed. Moldavia stopped issuing its own coinage circa 1520, under Prince Stefanita, when it was confronted with rapid depletion of funds and rising demands from the port. 
Such problems became endemic when the country, brought into the Great Turkish War, suffered the impact of the stagnation of the Ottoman Empire. At one point, during the 1650s and 1660s, princes began relying on counterfeit coinage, usually copies of Swedish riksdalers, as was that issued by Eustrati Dabija. The economic decline was accompanied by a failure to maintain state structures, the feudal-based Moldavian military forces were no longer convoked, and the few troops maintained by the rulers remained professional mercenaries such as the Semeni. However, Moldavia and the similarly affected Wallachia remained both important sources of income for the Ottoman Empire and relatively prosperous agricultural economies, especially as suppliers of grain and cattle. The latter was especially relevant in Moldavia, which remained an underpopulated country of pastures. In time, much of the resources were tied to the Ottoman economy, either through monopolies on trade that were only lifted in 1829, after the Treaty of Adrianople which did not affect all domains directly, or through the raise in direct taxes, the one demanded by the Ottomans from the princes, as well as the ones demanded by the princes from the country's population. Taxes were directly proportional with Ottoman requests, but also with the growing importance of Ottoman appointment and sanctioning of princes in front of election by the boyars and the boyar council, Svatil Boyaresk, drawing in a competition among pretenders, which also implied the intervention of creditors as suppliers of bribes. The fiscal system soon included taxes such as the vakarat, a tax on head of cattle, first introduced by Ianku Sasol in the 1580s. The economic opportunities offered brought about a significant influx of Greek and Levantine financiers and officials, who entered a stiff competition with the high boyars over appointments to the court. As the manor system suffered the blows of economic crises, and in the absence of salarization which implied that persons in office could decide their own income, obtaining princely appointment became the major focus of a boyar's career. Such changes also implied the decline of free peasantry and the rise of serfdom, as well as the rapid fall in the importance of low boyars a traditional institution, the latter soon became marginal, and, in more successful instances, added to the population of towns, however, they also implied a rapid transition towards a monetary economy, based on exchanges in foreign currency. Serfdom was doubled by the much less numerous slave population Rabi, composed of migrant Roma and captured Nogue. The conflict between princes and boyars was to become exceptionally violent, the latter group, who frequently appealed to the Ottoman court in order to have princes comply with its demands, was persecuted by rulers such as Alexandru Lepusnianu and John III. Johann Voda's revolt against the Ottomans ended in his execution 1574. The country descended into political chaos, with frequent Ottoman and Tatar incursions and pillages. The claims of Musitans to the crown and the traditional system of succession were ended by scores of illegitimate reigns. One of the usurpers, Johann Iacob Heraclid, was a Protestant Greek who encouraged the Renaissance and attempted to introduce Lutheranism to Moldavia. In 1595, the rise of the Movilesti boyars to the throne with Iremia Movila coincided with the start of frequent anti-Ottoman and anti-Habsburg military expeditions of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth into Moldavian territory see Moldavian magnate wars, and rivalries between pretenders to the Moldavian throne encouraged by the three competing powers. The Wallachian prince Michael the Brave, after previously taking over Transylvania, also deposed Prince Eremia Movila, in 1600, and managed to become the first prince to rule over Moldavia, Wallachia, and Transylvania. The episode ended in Polish conquests of lands down to Bucharest, soon ended by the outbreak of the Polish-Swedish War and the re-establishment of Ottoman rule. Polish incursions were dealt a blow by the Ottomans during the 1620 Battle of Sakora, which also saw an end to the reign of Gaspar Graziani. A period of relative peace followed during the more prosperous and prestigious rule of Vasile Lupu. 
He took the throne as a boyar appointee in 1637 and began battling his rival Gheorghe Stefan, as well as the Wallachian prince Matei Basarab. However, his invasion of Wallachia, with the backing of Cossack Hetman Bodin Komelnitsky, ended in disaster at the Battle of Finta in 1653. A few years later, Moldavia was occupied for two short intervals by the anti-Ottoman Wallachian prince Constantine Serban, who clashed with the first ruler of the Gicca family, George Gicca. In the early 1680s, Moldavian troops under George Dukas intervened in right bank Ukraine and assisted Mehmed IV in the Battle of Vienna, only to suffer the effects of the Great Turkish War. Topic: Fanariots 1711 to 1822. During the late 17th century, Moldavia became the target of the Russian Empire's southwards expansion, inaugurated by Peter the Great with the Russo-Turkish War of 1710–1711. Prince Dmitri Kantemir sided with Peter in open rebellion against the Ottomans, but he was defeated at Stanilesti. Sultan Ahmed III officially discarded recognition of local choices for princes, imposing instead a system relying solely on Ottoman approval. The Fanariote epic, inaugurated by the reign of Nicholas Mavrocordados. Fanariote rule was marked by political corruption, intrigue, and high taxation, as well as by sporadic incursions of Habsburg and Russian armies deep into Moldavian territory. Nonetheless, they also attempted legislative and administrative modernization inspired by the Enlightenment such as the decision by Constantine Mavrocordados to salarize public offices, to the outrage of boyars, and the abolition of serfdom in 1749, as well as Skrla Kalamachi's code, and signified a decrease in Ottoman demands after the threat of Russian annexation became real and the prospects of a better life led to waves of peasant emigration to neighboring lands. The effects of Ottoman control were also made less notable after the 1774 Treaty of Kuchik Kainarka allowed Russia to intervene in favor of Ottoman subjects of the Eastern Orthodox faith, leading to campaigns of petitioning by the Moldavian boyars against princely policies. In 1712, Hogan was taken over by the Ottomans and became part of a defensive system that Moldavian princes were required to maintain, as well as an area for Islamic colonization, the Laz community. Topic: <laughs> Fragmentation. In 1775 Moldavia lost to the Habsburg Empire its northwestern part, which became known as Bukovina. For Moldavia, it meant both an important territorial loss and a major blow to the cattle trade, as the region stood on the trade route to Central Europe. The Treaty of Jassy in 1792 forced the Ottoman Empire to cede Yedisan to the Russian Empire, which made Russian presence much more notable, given that the empire acquired a common border with Moldavia. The first effect of this was the cession of the eastern half of Moldavia renamed as Bessarabia to the Russian Empire in 1812. Topic. Organic Statute, 1848 Revolution Fanariote rule was officially ended after the 1821 occupation of the country by Alexander Ypsilantis's Feliki Aetiria during the Greek War of Independence. The subsequent Ottoman retaliation led to the rule of Ioan Sturza. He was considered the first of a new system, since the Ottomans and Russia had agreed in 1826 to allow for the election by locals of rulers over the two Danubian principalities, and convened on their mandating for seven-year terms. In practice, a new foundation to reigns in Moldavia was created by the Russo-Turkish War 1828 beginning a period of Russian domination over the two countries which ended only in 1856. 
Begun as a military occupation under the command of Pavel Kisilov, Russian domination gave Wallachia and Moldavia, which were not removed from nominal Ottoman control, the modernizing organic statute the first document resembling a constitution, as well as the first to regard both principalities. After 1829, the country also became an important destination for immigration of Ashkenazi Jews from the Kingdom of Galicia and Lodomeria and areas of Russia see History of the Jews in Romania and Sudeti. The first Moldavian rule established under the statute, that of Mihail Sturdza, was nonetheless ambivalent, eager to reduce abuse of office. Sturdza introduced reforms, the abolition of slavery, secularization, economic rebuilding, but he was widely seen as enforcing his own power over that of the newly instituted Consultative Assembly. A supporter of the union of his country with Wallachia and of Romanian Romantic nationalism, he obtained the establishment of a customs union between the two countries 1847 and showed support for radical projects favored by low boyars. Nevertheless, he clamped down with noted violence the Moldavian revolutionary attempt in the last days of March 1848. Grigor Alexandru Gicca allowed the exiled revolutionaries to return to Moldavia c. 1853, which led to the creation of the National Party Partida Nationala, a trans-boundary group of radical union supporters which campaigned for a single state under a foreign dynasty. <laughs> Southern Bessarabia In 1856, under the terms of the Treaty of Paris, the Russian Empire returned to Moldavia a significant territory in southern Bessarabia including a part of Budjak, organized later as the Bolgrad, Kahul, and Ismail counties. <laughs> Union with Wallachia Russian domination ended abruptly after the Crimean War, when the Treaty of Paris also passed the two Romanian principalities under the tutelage of great European powers together with Russia and the Ottoman overlord. Power sharing included the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland, the Austrian Empire, the French Empire, the Kingdom of Piedmont Sardinia, and Prussia. Due to Austrian and Ottoman opposition and British reserves, the Union program as demanded by radical campaigners was debated intensely. In September 1857, given that Kamakam Nikolai Vogoride had perpetrated fraud in elections in Moldavia, the powers allowed the two states to convene ad hoc divans, which were to decide a new constitutional framework. The result showed overwhelming support for the Union, as the creation of a liberal and neutral state. After further meetings among leaders of Tudor states, an agreement was reached the Paris Convention, whereby a limited union was to be enforced, separate governments and thrones, with only two bodies a court of cassation and a central commission residing in Foxani. It also stipulated that an end to all privilege was to be passed into law, and awarded back to Moldavia the areas around Bolharad, Kahul, and Ismail. However, the convention failed to note whether the two thrones could not be occupied by the same person, allowing Partida Nationala to introduce the candidacy of Alexandru Ioan Cusa in both countries. On January 17, January 5, 1859 Old Style, in Iasi, he was elected Prince of Moldavia by the respective electoral body. After street pressure over the much more conservative body in Bucharest, Cusa was elected in Wallachia as well February 5, January 24. Exactly three years later, after diplomatic missions that helped remove opposition to the action, the formal union created the United Principalities the basis of modern Romania and instituted Cusa as Domnitor. All legal matters were clarified after the replacement of the prince with Carol of Hohenzollern Sigmaringen in April 1866, and the creation of an independent kingdom of Romania in 1881, this officially ending the existence of the Principality of Moldavia. Topic: Society. Topic. 
Topic: <laughs> Slavery. Slavery Romanian, Robi, was part of the social order from before the founding of the Principality of Moldavia, until it was abolished in stages during the 1840s and 1850s. Most of the slaves were of Roma Gypsy ethnicity. There were also slaves of Tatar ethnicity, probably prisoners captured from the wars with the Nogai and Crimean Tatars. The institution of slavery was first attested in a 1470 Moldavian document, through which Prince Stephen the Great frees Ona, a Tatar slave who had fled to Jagiellon, Poland. The exact origins of slavery are not known, as it was a common practice in medieval Europe. As in the Byzantine Empire, the Roma were held as slaves of the state, of the boyars, or of the monasteries. Historian Nikolai Iorga associated the Roma people's arrival with the 1241 Mongol invasion of Europe and considered their slavery as a vestige of that era. He believed that the Romanians took the Roma as slaves from the Mongols and preserved their status to control their labor. Other historians consider that the Roma were enslaved while captured during the battles with the Tatars. The practice of enslaving prisoners may also have been taken from the Mongols. The ethnic identity of the Tatar slaves is unknown. They could have been captured Tatars of the Golden Horde, Cumans, or the slaves of Tatars and Cumans. While it is possible that some Romani people were slaves or auxiliary troops of the Mongols or Tatars, most of them came from south of the Danube, demonstrating that slavery a widespread practice. The Tatar slaves, smaller in numbers, were eventually merged into the Roma population. Traditionally, Roma slaves were divided into three categories. The smallest was owned by the Hospodars, and went by the Romanian language name of Tagani Domnesti, gypsies belonging to the Lord. The two other categories comprised Tagani Manastiersti, gypsies belonging to the monasteries who were the property of Romanian Orthodox and Greek Orthodox monasteries, and Tagani Boyaresti, gypsies belonging to the Boyars, who were enslaved by the category of landowners. The abolition of slavery was carried out following a campaign by young revolutionaries who embraced the liberal ideas of the Enlightenment. In 1844, Moldavian Prince Mihail Sturdza proposed a law on the freeing of slaves owned by the church and state. By the 1850s, the movement gained support from almost the whole of Romanian society. In December 1855, following a proposal by Prince Grigor Alexandru Gica, a bill drafted by Mihail Kogelnisianu and Petra Mavroeni was adopted by the Divan. The law emancipated all slaves to the status of taxpayers, citizens. Support for the abolitionists was reflected in Romanian literature of the mid 19th century. The issue of the Roma slavery became a theme in the literary works of various liberal and romantic intellectuals, many of whom were active in the abolitionist camp. The Romanian abolitionist movement was also influenced by the much larger movement against black slavery in the United States through press reports and through a translation of Harriet Beecher Stowe's Uncle Tom's Cabin. Translated by Theodor Cadrescu and first published in Iasi in 1853, under the name Coliba Louis Mosu Toma Sao Viata Negrilor in Settle Statler Unite Din America, which translates back as, Uncle Toma's Cabin or the Life of Blacks in the Southern United States of America. It was the first American novel to be published in Romanian. The foreword included a study on slavery by Mihail Kogelnisianu. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Military forces. Under the reign of Stephen the Great, all farmers and villagers had to bear arms. Stephen justified this by saying that every man has a duty to defend his fatherland. According to Polish chronicler Jan de Lugos, if someone was found without carrying a weapon, he was sentenced to death. Stephen reformed the army by promoting men from the landed free peasantry razesi i.e. something akin to freeholding yeomen to infantry and light cavalry 
to make himself less dependent on the boyars, and introduced his army to guns. In times of crises, the small host Ostiamica, which consisted of around 10,000 to 12,000 men, stood ready to engage the enemy, while the large host Ostia Mare, which could reach up to 40,000, had all the free peasantry older than 14, and strong enough to carry a sword or use the bow, recruited. This seldom happened, for such a levée en masse was devastating for both economy and population growth. In the Battle of Vaslui, Stephen had to summon the large host and also recruited mercenary troops. In the Middle Ages and early Renaissance, the Moldavians relied on light cavalry Kalarasi, which used hit-and-run tactics similar to those of the Tatars, this gave them great mobility and also flexibility, in case they found it more suitable to dismount their horses and fight in hand-to-hand -hand combat, as it happened in 1422, when 400 horse archers were sent to aid Jagiellon Poland, Moldavia's overlord against the Teutonic Knights. When making eye contact with the enemy, the horse archers would withdraw to a nearby forest and camouflage themselves with leaves and branches. According to Jan de Lugos, when the enemy entered the wood, they were showered with arrows and defeated. The heavy cavalry consisted of the nobility, namely, the boyars and their guards, the viteji lit, brave ones, small nobility, and the kurteni the court cavalry all nominally part of the small host. In times of war, boyars were compelled by the feudal system of allegiance to supply the prince with troops in accordance with the extent of their manorial domain. Other troops consisted of professional foot soldiers which fulfilled the heavy infantry role, and the Pliusi, free peasants whose role was that of border guards, they guarded the mountain passes and were prepared to ambush the enemy and to fight delaying actions. In the absence of the prince, command was assigned to the mayor Spatar grand sword bearer, a military office or to the mayor Vornik approximately. Governor of the country, a civilian office second only to the voivod, which was filled by the prince himself. Supplying the troops was by tradition later made into law the duty of the inhabitants of those lands on which the soldiers were present at a given time. The Moldavians as well as Wallachians' favorite military doctrine in defensive wars was a scorched earth policy combined with harassment of the advancing enemy using hit and run tactics and disruption of communication and supply lines, followed by a large scale ambush. A weakened enemy would be lured in a place where it would find itself in a position hard or impossible to defend. A general attack would follow, often with devastating results. The shattered remains of what was once the enemy army would be pursued closely and harassed all the way to the border and sometimes beyond. A typical example of successful employments of this scenario is the Battle of Vaslui. Towards the end of the 15th century, especially after the success of guns and cannons, mercenaries became a dominant force in the country's military. With the economic demands created by the stagnation of the Ottoman Empire, the force diminished and included only mercenaries such as the Seameni. The 1829 Treaty of Adrianople allowed Moldavia to again maintain its own troops, no longer acting as an auxiliary under strict Ottoman supervision, and assigned red over blue pennants see flag and coat of arms of Moldavia. Their renewed existence under Mihail Sturza was a major symbol and rally point for the nationalist cause, aiding in bringing about the 1848 Moldavian Revolution. <laughs> <laughs> Fleet An early mention of a Moldavian naval fleet is found in connection with the rule of Aaron Taranul, who used it to help Wallachian ruler Michael the Brave establish his control over the Chilia branch of the Danube and Dobruja. The Treaty of Adrianople provided for a Moldavian self-defense naval force, to be composed of cake vessels. Schooners armed with cannons were first built in the 1840s. Along with patrolling the Danube, these made their way on its tributaries, the Sirat and the Prut River. <laughs> 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 
Topic: <laughs> Flags and historical coats of arms. Topic: <laughs> Geography. <laughs> 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 Geographically, Moldavia is limited by the Carpathian Mountains to the west, the Cherimish River to the north, the Dniester River to the east and the Danube and Black Sea to the south. The Prut River flows approximately through its middle from north to south. Of late 15th century Moldavia, with an area of approximately 97,000 square kilometers, 37,000 square miles, the biggest part and the core of the former principality is located in Romania, 47.5%, followed by the Republic of Moldova, 30.5%, and Ukraine, 22%. This represents 88% of the Republic of Moldova's surface, 19.5% of Romania's surface, and 3.5% of Ukraine's surface. The region is mostly hilly, with a range of mountains in the west, and plain areas in the southeast. Moldavia's highest altitude is Inu Peak 2,279 meters, which is also the westernmost point of the region. Topic. Administrative divisions Topic. Population Topic. Historical population Contemporary historians estimate the population historically referred to as Moldavians of the Moldavian Principality in the 15th century, at between 250,000 to 600,000 people, but an extensive cartography was first conducted in 1769 to 1774. In 1848, the northwestern part, annexed in 1775 by the Habsburg Empire, Bukovina, had a population of 300. 77,571. In 1856, the eastern half of Moldavia, Bessarabia, annexed in 1812 by the Russian Empire, had a population of 990,274, while the population of Moldavia proper, the western half, in 1859, was 1,463,927. Topic. Cities The largest cities as per last censuses and metropolitan areas in the Moldavia region are Moldova Chisinau 532,513 662,836 in metropolitan area Balti 97930 102457 Taina Bender 91882 Romania EOC 290422 465477 in metropolitan area capital of Moldavia between 1564 to 1859 Galati 249,432 323,563 Bacau 144,307 223,239 Bodosani 106,847 144,617 Succeva 92,121, 144,100, capital of Moldavia between 1388 to 1564. Piatra Nemp 85,055, 131,334. Foxani 79,315, 125,699. Ukraine. Chernivtsi, Cernati, two hundred forty thousand six hundred Ismail, Ismail, eighty four thousand eight hundred fifteen. 
Topic: Education. In 1562, the so-called Schola Latina, a Latin academic college, was founded in Cotnari, near Iasi, a school which marked the beginnings of the organized humanistic education institutions in Moldavia. The first institute of higher learning that functioned on the territory of Romania was Academia Vasiliana, 1640, founded by Prince Vasile Lupu as a higher school for Latin and Slavonic languages, followed by the Princely Academy in 1707. The first high education structure in Romanian language was established in the autumn of 1813, when Gheorghe Asaci laid the foundations of a class of engineers, its activities taking place within the Greek Princely Academy. After 1813, other moments marked the development of higher education in Romanian language regarding both humanities and the technical science. Academia Mihailiana, founded in 1835 by Prince Mihail Sturza, is considered the first Romanian superior institute. In 1860, three faculties part of the Academia Mihailiana formed the nucleus for the newly established University of Iasi, the first Romanian modern university. Topic: Culture. Topic. Literature Kazania Lui Varlam Descriptio Maldavi Chronicle of Huru Grigor Urish Myron Kostin Nikolai Kostin Ion Nekulche Dmitri Kantemir Gheorghe Asachi Topic. Magazines and newspapers Alauda Romaneasca Albina Romaneasca Dacia Literara Propasarea Romania Literara Theatre The Great Theatre, National Theatre Topic. Architecture Moldavian style World Heritage Sites Churches of Moldavia Residents of Bukovinian and Dalmatian Metropolitans Rudy Geodetic Point as part of the Struve Geodetic Arc Tentative list Nemt Monastery Tre Iarari Monastery The Cultural Landscape Orhaiul Vechi Old Orhe The typical Krernosum soils of the Balti Steppe Slatioara Secular Forest Topic Image Gallery equals equals see also